What is it that we're really doing? We're going to break an unbreakable Nazi code and win the war. Oh. Now the film The Imitation Game has thrust their achievements into the spotlight, telling the story of Alan Turing, the genius who cracked the Enigma code. A short time ago, I spoke to two former Bletchley Park veterans, Pamela Rose and Pat Davis. They were joined by historian Tessa Dunlop, who's just written a book, The Bletchley Girls. Bletchley's become this touchstone of popular culture and is very written about and uh, invented and some wonderful films, but tends to always focus on the, the boffin, the professor type, uh, led, of course, uh, by Alan Turing, invariably. And actually, beneath those very bright, predominantly male uh, characters, there were uh, thousands of women. And the other thing that really appealed to me was the idea of some of those women still being alive. So it wasn't just a rehash of, a, of an old history story. It was uh, still resonated today. You know, it, it is living, a living story and one that is in people's memories and, well, and that they carry with them right now. Absolutely. Let's hear more of those living stories. We've got Pat and Pamela here, both in their 90s, but both involved in this very special war effort, Pamela. You spoke German before the war started. So when it yes. did start, how did you then get involved in Bletchley Park? Well, I was actually, I was an actress at the time and uh, actor, I should say, nowadays. And um, I was acting and I was rather depressed, actually. I was doing some ENSA, which was entertaining the troops. And uh, my brother was missing and one or two people had gone. And I got a, a telegraph from uh, my godmother, who was a very interfering woman and who said, I know you're doing splendid work, dear, entertaining the troops, but they want girls just like you at a very interesting place, etc., etc." And so I thought I'd better apply. And then I was sent for. And as a matter of fact, when I was sent for, I was just, uh, had just been offered a um, first very small part in the West End. And I was thrilled about it. And so when I'd had the interview, I said, well, now, he said, yes, we'd like to have you. And I said, uh, well, I've uh, just been offered a part in the West End. And he said, oh, well, I think the stage can wait and the war can't. Absolutely. So, so you I got said, involved. Right. So, so I went. And we've got Bletchley. pictures of you when you were at Bletchley Park. And in some ways, it looks like you're having a sort of a, a, a nice summer. It looks like you're having a picnic at Bletchley Park. We are Park. having a picnic in that photograph. I, I was in naval intelligence. Um, but then there was army and... Air Force, and then there were the code breakers. People like Ooh. Alan Turing. Alan Turing, Did you exactly. meet him at all? I met him just, I shook him. My husband, whom I met there, uh, introduced me to him once, I remember, but I didn't take it in very much. I mean, I didn't take him in. And it was just, we were having breakfast in the canteen and he came up. And, I... and you learned to speak German to help out? Well, I had learned German uh, because my grandfather had an Austrian cook and she didn't speak English when she first arrived. And uh, so I spent a lot of time with her. And so by the time I joined the Wrens, I was pretty fluent in German. Because you weren't actually at Bletchley, you were somewhere else. And again, you were in a, a close-knit team. We've got pictures of that. And I think actually, there you are in the, in the white trousers. Looks like you're breaking the rules there, Pat. Everyone else is dressed in their uniform. Well, we were at these small naval radio stations, very secret stations, at hotels that had been taken over and things small hotels around the coast, usually on a cliff. And we were encouraged to wear civilian clothes because we were so secret. Uh, nobody locally was knew what you're doing. supposed to have any idea what we were doing and didn't. So you would sit and constantly listen to the German chatter, would you, and note down what it was, and then where would that get sent? Well, it was all sent to Bletchley Park because uh, we did. We listened in four-hour watches round the clock. Um, with headphones and uh, twiddling up and down radio sets on the German Navy frequencies. And uh, they used a code like we have Hotel Fox. They had Anton, Berta, Cesar, Dora, Emil, Fritz. And they used to do long, long spiels in Enigma code. And it was sort of four letter groups going on and on. And uh, so when you picked up a German ship or base, that is what you're listening to. We had to write it absolutely accurately. And uh, we then teleprinted it, which was the fastest way of sending messages there. And now it's been made yeah. into a movie, particularly focusing on the life of Alan Turing in The Imitation Game. You've seen it, Pat. What I do you think? 
Well, um, some of it was absolute rubbish. I don't think there was any girl who had any such role at Bletchley. And poor Commander Denniston, who everybody liked and was, yes. you know, very respected, was made the villain of all things. So you, you knew Pamela, you knew him? Well, yes, not well, but I knew him, but I know he was liked. I've heard this about the film. I mean, somebody said to me, Denniston must have been a terrible, one of my grandchildren actually, must have been a terrible man. I, st I hadn't seen the film, so I didn't know what they were talking about. And I said, no, he wasn't. He was rather nice, I think. And uh, they just said, well, in the film, he's terrible, you know, so he must have been terrible. <laughs>